Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for another review video. And to say I'm excited for this one is really quite an understatement. Today I'll be taking a look at the brand new 16-inch Hunslet from Rapido, and these are my all-time favourite steam locomotives. I've literally been waiting for someone to make a ready-to-run model of these since I was about 10, and Rapido have finally delivered, so today we're going to take a look at the model and find out just how well they've delivered. So let's dive into some of the specs. As you can see, I've got Beatrice here today in the NCB South Yorkshire lined red livery. The model features a Next 18 decoder socket, and there's also a pre-fitted speaker too for those of you who like to run with DCC sound. Additionally, there's also a firebox LED in the cab, which we'll take a look at later on. Now, the RRP for the Hunslet is £129.96, with most of the retailers selling the models for around the £110 mark at the time of filming. Now, on a personal note, like I said, these are my absolute favourite engines of all time. I grew up with these when I volunteered at the MC and Bolton Abbey Steam Railway, and in fact, I remember this particular loco, Beatrice, although I only ever saw it in a fictional green livery. Hopefully, I can dig out a photo which should be on screen now. The lined red livery was always my favourite though, as can be seen here on Primrose Number no. 2, another model that Rapido is doing, although they're doing it in the black livery. Anyway, the point of me saying all this is that I have a lot of history and personal connection with these locos, and ever since Rapido announced that they were going to make them, I've been doing a little internal dance. That said, I am going to try my best to still be objective with this review. I think it's clear that I'm excited for this model, so do keep that in mind as you're watching as well, but like I said, I'll try not to get too carried away. Okay, with that said, I think it's important to note that this is Rapido UK's first double O-gauge locomotive to hit the market. Rapido have done commissions in the past, but these were all handled by the Canadian side of the company, with the UK branch only being set up a few years ago. Since then, they've announced a lot of locos and have released several wagons and, of course, the re-release of the Dynamometer car too. But as far as I know, they've only released one N-Gage loco very recently too. So, in some ways, this is going to be our first chance to see what they can do in double O-Gage with a locomotive. Taking a look at the model then, like I said earlier, this is the NCB lined red livery, which I think looks fantastic. There's really nice fine yellow lining all around the side of the saddle tanks and the cab too, which is additionally framed by the black as well. The colours themselves seem really nice and all the printing is very sharp too. Also printed very nicely are the name plates. As I mentioned earlier, this loco is Beatrice and the builder's plates on the side of the cab there, which hopefully you can see the detail in the close up. We also had the Loco's number and NCB lettering on the cab side too, again printed really clearly in yellow. Along the top of the saddle tank we have a nice handrail here, which I'm not sure if it's plastic or metal, but either way it does seem to be fairly durable. Interestingly, there's also a second handrail on the underside of the saddle tank too, and something I think that's worth mentioning here is that we can see daylight below the boiler as well. Obviously, in older models, this is where the motor and the mechanism would go. Think of the Hornby J94, for example. However, with manufacturers improving their designs all the time and becoming more ambitious, it's great to see that this characteristic of the Hunslet has made it through to the model as well. That also gives us an opportunity to see some of the motion, which you can just about see here, and that's been nicely picked out in red. Moving down to the wheels, these are the same red to match the livery, the more maroon colour I mean, and then the rods themselves have been picked out in the brighter red again. The steps up to the cab seem to just be plain maroon as well, rather than being lined like I thought they were. Perhaps that's just a preservation thing I have in my head, or maybe it's been simplified for the model. I'm sure Rapido have their reasons, and I imagine they've done a lot more research than I have anyway. Additionally, the front set of steps appears to be missing too, but don't worry, these are supplied in the resealable detail bag, which you can fit yourself should you want to. Moving around to the front of the loco, we have more of that lovely yellow and black lining over the front face of the saddle tank. You can also see the nice rivet detail here too, with that plate that links the smoke box and the saddle tank. Speaking of the smoke box, we have the stovepipe funnel on this loco, and I believe Beatrice is the only version in Rapido's current range to have this variation. Then there's a separately fitted lamp iron and smoke box dart, which as you would expect are both very nice. 
There's more rivet detailing in front of the smoke box on the foot plate. And then we move down to the rather striking buffer beam, which as you can see has been finished with wasp stripes. The lines between the yellow and black here seem nice and sharp, and as far as I can see there's no colour bleed at all. And of course, as I'm sure you all expect, we do indeed have sprung buffers on this model too. Looking along the top of the loco, you can see the livery up here transitions from red to black along the top of the saddle tank. There's a nice amount of detail up here too for a small industrial loco, with the water filler caps being represented nicely, with a little grab rail beside it too. We also have the dome with the safety valve and whistle on top as well. This is plastic rather than metal, and in some of the promotional images for this model I thought it looked a little bit chunky, but I'm pleased to say that it actually looks a lot better when you have the loco in your hands, to the point where I don't really think it's an issue. Now, sometimes we do get metal whistles on small industrials, the B2 Peckett springs to mind for example, and it is noticeable when that's the case, so it would have been nice to see here, but that is me just being picky, and I think at normal viewing distance it doesn't really make much of a difference. One thing I am really impressed with though is the cab. The detail in here is amazing, and this is certainly one of the better cabs I've seen. From the look of it we have separately glazed spectacles which is really nice and you can see that the interior walls of the cab have been painted in a cream colour too which is nice attention to detail from Rapido. The back head of the boiler looks fantastic as well with loads of fine detail for the controls and again these have all been picked out really nicely. Even the sight glasses have the stripes painted on them. And just a reminder as well that the Hunslet does have a firebox LED fitted as standard too, so we'll see that in action when we get the Loco running a little bit later on. To finish up then, we've got more of that nice yellow and black lining on the back of the coal bunker, and I just want to draw attention to the rims around the spectacle plates here as well, as there's some really good detail there too. The bunker does have a nice coal load fitted too, and then we've got another set of wasp stripes on the rear buffer beam as well. So, Beatrice has a really nice livery and some great detailing to match, but what is the running going to be like? Well, let's find out. So, with the Hunslet on the rolling road, let's turn up the power and see how well this loco performs. As you can see, it doesn't really crawl, but it does have a nice consistent slow speed and it's very smooth for what is a fairly small tank engine. It's pretty much silent at this point, although as we turn the speed up a little, there is a bit of noise. This isn't really a concern though, it's mostly the wheels turning with a little bit of motor noise in there too, but it's certainly not anything to worry about. And now that we have the Loco moving, this is the perfect opportunity to take a look at the firebox light, which as you can see is working really nicely indeed. I will say that the Rapido Hunslet does seem to be geared more for the slow speeds as this is now the Loco at full power. Now this is a decent top speed but most of my other Locos do seem to run much faster than this. In contrast the Hunslet seems to be geared more like the Victory from Planet Industrials which is focused more on the slow speed and that's exactly what we want for industrial Locos like this. In reverse, the situation is much the same, again there isn't much of a crawl, but the slow speed is still really nice and smooth. I should say as well that the Loco has been fully run in prior to filming, but it is running on analogue at the moment using a Gagemaster Series D controller. I will need to add a decoder before running this on my layout later on though, so we'll see if that makes any difference. I'll bring the loco to a stop now so that I can go and do that, and I'll see you in a moment for the running session.
welcome back to Pickwick Yard. It's been a while since this layout has featured on the channel. As you can see though, the Hunslet is running really nicely as it shunts these wagons around. I do think that now I've added a DCC decoder to the Loco, the crawl is a lot better than it was before, so that is really great. Now, I know a lot of people in the comments will probably tell me that being on analog or digital doesn't make a difference to how a Loco runs, and generally I agree with you. Certainly if you have a problem with a Loco and how it runs, converting it to run on DCC isn't going to fix that issue, although it can in some cases mask it. However, here I think it's more just about the controllability, and in this case I found it easier to select a low speed step on the DCC controller than when I was running it on analog. And again, just to reiterate, I don't think the running was bad at all on the rolling road. In fact, it's one of the smoothest locos I've come across. One thing I will say though was that removing the body to fit the decoder did make me a little bit anxious. As you can see here, it's the top of the tank that comes off, and this is basically held in place by two clips on either side of the loco. Now, for me personally, I prefer loosening screws to remove the body. Whenever I have to deal with clips on a model, I'm always worried that I'm going to break it, especially when it's brand new. That said, I did manage to get it off without too much trouble, and due to the way the prototype is designed, I can't really see how Rapido could have done this any other way. So back to the layout, I think it's important to note here that the Hunslet is coping really well with the track work on Pickwick Yard. For those of you who have been following the channel for a while, you'll know that this is one of my very early layouts which isn't particularly well constructed and consists of entirely secondhand track and points. Despite that though, Beatrice is performing really nicely and it's great to have this loco running on the layout. So I think we can consider this model a big success for Rapido. Like I said, this is the first 00 gauge release from the UK part of the company, and I'm really impressed with not only the detail, but also the running capabilities as well. Obviously, I've made my own personal feelings on this loco very clear, but I can see them being very popular with a lot of other modelers too. Small industrial locos like these are always good for smaller shunting layouts, and the fact that they come in a variety of brightly covered liveries as well is an extra selling point. Additionally, in a market where loco prices have risen quite a bit recently, it's refreshing to have a new model on the market which comes in at a fairly reasonable price. The Hunslet doesn't skimp on the features either, with a nicely detailed cab including that firebox flicker, and of course the pre-fitted speaker for DCC sound as well. Now, speaking of the sound versions, apparently these have been held up due to a concern from Rapido about a component on the decoders used. As frustrating as it is for Rapido to have another quality control issue, I think they've made the right decision to hold these back, rather than sending them out and risk the possibility of having to do another recall. Now, I will admit I do have at least one sound version on order, possibly more, that's all I'll say for the moment, so I may well do a follow-up video with a sound running session when Rapido send those out. But generally, I'm really pleased with this loco. 
I'm so glad we finally have the 16 inch Hunslets in model form. And on a personal note, I do want to say a big thank you to Rapido for making this loco. I didn't ever really think that this would happen and I'm so glad to have been proven wrong and be proven wrong with such a fantastic model too. If this is the level that Rapido are starting at with their Locos, then I think we've got a good time ahead of us with their further upcoming releases, and I'm certainly looking forward to taking a look at more of their products in the future. That's it for today though everyone, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!